Hello, Mr. Ed here. Today is December 23rd, 2017. Yeah, everybody's gone from the shop today. Everybody's home for Christmas. But I'm in here working because I got a lot of work to do. Shop's closed down so I can use the shop now for building our equipment for our beehives. And today I'm going to start work on, on our um, telescope and covers, these boxes right here. And uh, there's not a lot to these boxes. Uh, you know, you have four pieces that go around it, and then a piece of plywood or, or wood on the interior, and, uh, and then just a piece of metal on the top. So today what I'm going to uh, be uh, running out is going to be this piece of material right here, the, um, the outside edges of this. And for that, I've got a bunch of cypress. Um, and these are, that, these are our cypress boards that I'm going to be starting with, these pieces of uh, rough wood right here. And uh, I've already got them cut to the, um, to the width already. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rough piece of wood and I'm going to run it through uh, my, my molder, my little four-headed molder over here. And it's going to take this piece of wood, this rough piece of wood, and it's going to turn it into a nice dimensionalized piece of lumber. All right, bye. Dirt Rooster, he wanted me to cut him some tops too. I said he'll have to come over here to do that. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to grab the camera and I'm going to uh, show you the molder and see what, show you what, what actually the aspects of, of what actually happens uh, to make a piece of wood to transform from a piece of wood like this to come out looking like this. And I know this isn't really a, a much of a bee stuff, but for all us wood guys, oh yeah, that's cool stuff. So let's uh, take a look at that molder. This is our molder right here. Um, and uh, as you see all these little spaghetti looking octopus legs looking things right here these are all the the duct work that, that actually will take the, uh, the the shavings the chips um, from the machine and it'll um, vacuum them up and then it'll deposit them right over there in our collector right there so the, this machine throws a lot of sawdust and shavings and so you definitely don't want it to uh, be running without those <laughs> collectors right there so let's open up the top and I'll show you what's looking inside. This is what the inside of our machine looks like. And what's inside the machine is four cutter heads. You have one other cutter head right here on the bottom, which surfaces the bottom of the wood as it runs through. You have a side cutter head right here, which surfaces one of the sides. Another side cutter will surface the other side. And then a top cutter right here, which will surface the top of it. And then all these gnarly looking feed rollers right here with all these teeth in them. These will actually grab the wood as it's coming through and, uh, and pull it through the machine, through all the cutters, and then it will deposit it at the other end down here as a dimensionalized piece of lumber. Now I'm running just straight edge knives right here. These are the, the knives you can see, they're just straight but we also run profile knives in here which will give us different shapes for the uh, moldings that we need to uh, run our caskets. So Here's our pile of wood that um, I've got to run through this machine and it is a lot of wood. It's a hundred pieces of wood and by the time I finish it it's going to be beautiful wood ready for me to cut into lengths to build that telescope and cover. All right, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I've already got the machine set, and so I'm going to go ahead and start running a few pieces and let you see how it looks. There it is. It takes about 30 seconds to run a piece of this wood through there, and. Uh, comes out really really nice so I've only got 98 more to do and uh, it shouldn't take me but maybe about an hour or so to do that so I'm gonna finish doing that and we'll pick it up after that and now all the wood is planed down or should I say molded um, and it's it's done on, on all four sides and what's really nice about running it through the molder your your edges right here they're, they're all exactly the same dimension. Every one of these is the same width. And uh, in fact, they're 
they're so good, that edge is so good that you could actually use that as a glue joint. You could glue these things together and they'd, they'd hold. So they, for us, for our purpose, what we're going to do is just actually be lining up the, the, the boards to make our box go around it. These things are going to work perfect. So I'm going to head over to the uh, chop saw and uh, I'm going to start cutting these things up. I'm not going to get that done today, but I'm going to start cutting them to my length. Um, and then uh, after that, it'll be drilling holes, putting screws in them, assembling them. And then I've got to machine the, uh, the tops for them. That'll be later on during the week and uh, assembling that and then cutting out the metal. So there's a lot of work still left to go, but we're started now. All right. So if you remember, I told you this machine really does throw a lot of shavings, a lot of dust. And that's why you really do need to have that collector system. And these two bags right here are what we cut off our wood and what this collector gathered for us. So this, all this sawdust, which is really primed shavings right here, all this stuff will uh, actually wind up going out into the Abbott's chicken yard for his chickens and his goats. So it's all put to good use. Now all of our wood is uh, cut to size now, to, uh, to length. Um, it's already you know, run through the mold, so it's to width. So I have to go over and cut it to length, and that's two big old piles of wood I got beside me. So my next step is I'm going to actually be um, drilling holes in the end because what's going to happen is I'm going to actually be screwing uh, these pieces together, um, the, the, short, the shorter pieces to the longer pieces, to making our, our box part. So today I've got uh, my little fixture set up and that's really what, what I want to show you was the fixture that I made to drill these, these four holes on the ends of our longs. So check out this little fixture I made on the drill press. Now because I've got 800 of these holes to, um, to drill, I certainly uh, didn't want to do a really uh, slow method just putting in there, moving this thing and looking on a mark to do it. So what I did was I, I, I built a high fence on the back side of our press and I've got a little 45 block behind it to, to help support that. And then I took um, some little 2x4s four, uh, uh, and, and I ripped them to the width so that I'm going to actually using these edges right here as my marks to uh, to hold my board on. So what I what I do is I'll actually put the the piece of wood holding to one side, slide it over, pull it down, turn it around, push it over to one side, pull it down, slide it over, and push it down. And by doing that, I'll get all four sides um, of, of our piece of wood um, drilled in the position so that when I, I go to screw them together and I put the other piece on it, that, that hole is going to be centered in line with this piece of wood right, right here. So that's what we want to do. We want to get this centered on our wood so that it's going to be centered on here. So that's all this fixture is. So I'll show you one little piece when I do it. That's it. So by building the uh, fixture using uh, some 2x4 uh, for my plate right down here as, as my measuring block and, uh, and keeping this high fence, I'm able to um, drill the, the holes and the saw, sawdust, the shavings, will just fall down, uh, down onto the bottom. I don't have to constantly worry about having material getting behind my uh, piece of wood that I'm putting up against my fence. It's just dropped down here. So that, that's a really, uh, a really good idea about using a type of fixture like this where you're not fighting that sawdust build up all the time. So I've only got 800 of them to do like I said and um, that'll probably take me close to two hours to do that. It takes about a, or maybe about 30 seconds to do one of them. So um, about two hours worth of work right there. So it's a really glamorous job so let me get at it. Today is January 1st, 2018. Happy New Year. And this morning I'm um, actually going to start assembling. In fact I've already assembled a bunch of our lids uh, already and I really have to get these things done today because tomorrow we actually everybody comes back into the shop and uh, we need all the tables that I'm using to, to stack all my material on. So this morning I want to show you the, the process and the jig that I use to assemble the lids and uh, I'm going to grab the camera and first show you the, the little fixture that I've made to, to uh, assemble them and then the process in which I do that. Now this is the fixture that I built to um, assemble these lids and say I had 100 plus of them to do. I wanted to do, build something that would be very easy to repeat and, and pretty much be accurate in, in after I've assembled them. So the process that I use 
is I will grab, uh, my first I'll grab a long piece of wood and I'll slide it inside my, my fixture at this end. Grab my next piece of wood and slide it in at this end. Now they've already got screws in it. Now this corner of my fixture is the most important corner, this, so this is my starting point. As long as this piece of wood is butted up against this fixture right here, this stop right here, then this piece of wood will then butt up right to it and then I can then screw into it. And as long as these two points are flush right here, the fixture is holding it enough so that it's going to be square enough. And because our material is all cut to the same length, if when I return this fixture around and attach this piece of wood to the other side, as long as the fixture, as long as the wood is flush to the top right here and down to the bottom, our lid is going to be square enough to um, cover over our box. And then after I screw these two side pieces on, then I'll come turn it over again, grab my next piece of wood, slide it on, and it'll be just like this and screw into this end and screw into this end. So let me go ahead and assemble one of them and I'll show you how I do it. Well, the first thing I do is going to load up my screws on my pieces of wood because it's so much easier to do it out here than it is um, when the pieces of wood are on the fixture. So I'm simply going to place my eight screws in the holes that we've already drilled, all 800 of them. Place our screws inside of these. And then once we've got that in there, then we're going to start it. So we're going to, like I said, we're going to take my first piece and it slides right into this back stop back here and it stops up against this side piece right here. I grab my next piece of wood, slide it inside of here, and then my next piece, slide it right here, and our other side piece right here. So now we have our frame is built up, and all we have to do is screw it together. Again, like I said, I'm just making sure that my points are flush. I've got to start from here because I've got to make sure that this part is up against my stop. And then my last piece, I just have to make sure that my points are flush up. And there you have it. a nice frame right there. So I've only got about mm, 70 more to go, and it'll be a day. Let me get busy on that. Now I did want to show before I put the um, plywood lids on the uh, lids themselves how the um, lids actually fit on our box. I don't want the lids to fit really tight. I want them to fit sort of loose so that I won't have any trouble um, taking the lids on and off. So we're going to have our um, inner cover on top of our box at this point. And so when we place our lid over that inner cover you can see I've got lots of room in there to move that lid around. So it's not going to be a um, hard or tight fit to put that lid on there. And, and you can imagine that there's actually a piece of plywood over the top of our, our lid, right, lid, our lid edge right here. All right, I just wanted to show you that before I put the lids on. So today I've got all the boxes all uh, finished and uh, we're ready to spray them. And we got Jamaica Renee here. He's going to go ahead and do our spraying for us. He sprayed all of our boxes for us, and today he's going to spray our top for us. And this wood is so pretty, it's almost a shame to spray it, but um, it'll do better with a coat of paint on it. So Jamaica Renee is going to use his expertise with that spray gun, and he's going to spray all these tops for us, and then we'll be able to move on putting our lids on to them. They're all nailed together so they can't come apart, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and finish this thing up. This shouldn't take more than maybe an hour. We'll put three coats of paint on this. So let's do this thing. Hit it, Renee! <laughs>
So we got our, our lids now. They're painted. Jamaica Renee's got ahead and painted off all, all of our, our lid covers. And we're now ready to start cutting out our um, lids themselves. Um, for that, we're using 3 8 inch uh, Luan, exterior Luan. And uh, yeah, it's just a rectangle, like 20 by 16, something like that. And you could cut that on your table saw. But here at uh, St. Joseph Woodworks, we don't do anything small. We do everything large and big scale. So for this, we're going to use our CNC. And it's just a piece of 3 8 inch plywood. And yeah, you could lift that up, but why lift it up if you got a vacuum lift? So Jamaica Renee is going to actually help me do this also. We're going to go ahead and grab the piece of uh, plywood, put it on our CNC. And once we put it on our CNC, it's actually going to cut these panels for us. So these panels fit our lid right like that. So we got uh, 11 sheets of plywood to cut. We cut 10 panels at a time and uh, so it'll take probably about oh, a little over an hour to cut these things out and by then we'll have um, 110 pieces of plywood all cut out real nice. So I'm going to uh, grab the camera and as Jamaica Renee goes and uh, starts loading this stuff up show you how this uh, CNC really does work. Nice! There it is, folks. Ten nice lids cut out with our machine and ready to pull off the table. So now I'm going to grab them off the table, sand the edges, throw another sheet on here, and just keep on cutting. It took a total of seven minutes to do that. I don't know how fast it is and, and how fast I speed it up, but it took seven minutes to do this cut. But, I mean, they are perfectly square lids for us. So well, let me finish up this job and we'll move on to the next stage, which is putting the lids onto our box coat. Well, I'm finally ready to actually start putting all the pieces that I've got for the uh, uh, telescoping covers together. I've got our, basically our frame for our uh, covers already constructed and painted. Got all of our lid covers cut to size, ready to go and these really cool metal coverings um, to, to put on top of them. Um, I, I want to say on these right here, I actually had uh, a company um, in, in, co in Franklinton actually built these for me. Um, I, I had been buying these covers, uh, I think it was from Walter Kelly, and I was paying like 10 bucks a piece for them, and, uh, plus the shipping. Well, these guys up in Franklinton, they, they were able to do these things for me. Uh, for like under eight bucks a piece. So that was a really, uh, really good deal. So all my pieces are ready uh, to go. Um, and I think that we may as well just go ahead and build one. So what, what I'm doing to, to build one, let me show you the, what I'm using to, uh, to cut these stuff, uh, to assemble these things. Well, again, the first thing I'm going to be doing is using my, my nice little uh, Lazy Susan platform. This just is a great, great tool right here. And how I'm going to be doing these uh, assemblies is I'm shooting uh, staples. That's all I'm shooting is two staples, two different size staples. Uh, in this gun right here, I've got uh, inch and a quarter staples. They're quarter inch by inch and a quarter. And in this gun right here, I'm shooting a five eighths um, by quarter inch staple in, in this one too. So this gun, I'll be actually shooting uh, uh, the metal, attaching the metal to the uh, covers. And this gun right here will be shooting the uh, piece of plywood to the frame part of, of our cover also. Now, um, I'm just using a, a, a water-resistant glue. It's Tight Bond 2 that I'm using on this one. It's not waterproof, water-resistant. And then I'm also, I've got my hammer here because I, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have to uh, nail, um, finish nailing um, these staples through um, because that, that metal is, is a 26 gauge metal. It's a really heavy gauge metal, really good stuff. I was really happy I found this company to do that. 
So I'll probably have to tap the, uh, the staples all the way in to seat them properly. So I'm going to grab the pieces, and we're actually going to assemble these things right now. So I have my frame part right here, and the first thing I'm going to do is go to grab my glue, and I'm going to run a bead of glue all around this, this top edge of it. And it's kind of a, um, a heavy bead. It's the uh, end of this glue bottle is cut pretty good, so I'm getting a nice wide bead, probably about an eighth of an inch wide bead of glue on there, so it's a lot of glue on there. I'll grab a cover, and then when I put these covers on, I want to put the, the, the cup side up so that I'm going to press down on it. Just feeling, feeling the edges to make sure I'm all square on my edges. I'm going to grab the uh, inch and a quarter gun. Covers. Set it on there. And I'm pushing down on this lid because I want to make sure that, that that lid is down tight to the plywood. knock these staples in. Here's one of them that didn't actually pull through, so we're going to shoot that one again. Again, tap that one in. There you have it. And that is a nice telescoping cover right there. Well, I've only got only about 110 more of these things to build, and I got two days to do that, so I know I'll be able to get that done. I got Saturday and Monday. Monday's Martin Luther Day and uh, Martin Luther King Day, so uh, I got the shot for myself today and Monday. I'm going to go ahead and finish these things up. So thanks for watching. Keep on watching, and I'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Ed, I'm out of here until the next one. Well, today is January 1st. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs>